If you're visiting New Orleans for the first time, the odds are very high that a lot of the sites you want to see are located in the French Quarter. So that's where I want to start this video and show you some of the top things to do when you visit the Big Easy. One of the most iconic sites in New Orleans is Jackson Square. Jackson Square has historical significance as the site of the Louisiana Purchase in 1803 and it was declared a historical landmark in 1960. New Orleans has been a port city for the last few hundred years and with Jackson Square being right there at the port, it makes it one of the oldest areas of New Orleans. Be sure when you visit Jackson Square to check out St. Louis Cathedral. There have been churches on this site since the 1700s and the cathedral you see in front of you has been largely expanded and rebuilt since the 1800s. This cathedral was even visited back in the 80s from His Holiness Pope John Paul II. Around this square you'll find locals working hard for the money. Whether they're trying to entertain you, sing you a song, write you a poem, or tell your fortune. I like to check out the artists around Jackson Square. These artists have been certified with badges to sell only their original artwork. The next thing we're gonna check out in our New Orleans video is the French Market. The French Market has been around since roughly the late 1700s. It's been built up, destroyed, built up again over the last couple hundred years. And it is one of the longest standing open air markets here in New Orleans. what you're looking for, you're probably gonna find it here in this market. I mean, they have t-shirts, souvenirs, purses, jewelry, arts and crafts, and my favorite, food and drinks, which is where we're gonna go for our next New Orleans stop to get a muffaletta. Okay, one dish that is synonymous with New Orleans is the muffaletta. Now normally you might hear people go into Central Grocery to get this, but because of Hurricane Ida, Central Grocery is not really open right now to be able to get a muffaletta there. So, since we're in the French market and there's so many things to eat and drink here, we decided to get a muffaletta from Alberto's Bistro. It says it has three meats, two cheeses, and a homemade olive spread on it. I love olives, so we'll see if we like this. And I think normally it's cold, but this one is heated and toasted. That sandwich is really good. It's very olivey, so if you don't like olives, especially green olives on this one, you may not like it. Definitely also has olive oil on it. Maybe salami, I'm not exactly sure. Like I said, it's got three meats on it, but it is delicious. Especially today because it's kind of chilly, it's nice to have a warm thing to eat instead of a cold thing, but normally, like I said, you would get it cold. Of course, I have a New Orleans food vlog coming next week. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that upload. Now that we're full of crawfish and muffaletta and this ice cream daiquiri that I just <laughs> took care of, uh, one thing that I think you should do when you come to New Orleans is walk around. Take in the sights, check out the shops, meet the people, see what fun you can get yourself into. When you visit New Orleans, I know everything you want to see is in the French Quarter, but try to step out of the French Quarter, use some of their trolley lines, and see more of the beauty that New Orleans has to offer. Right now, we're headed out to the city park. In my opinion, taking the trolley is iconic for New Orleans. We spent a few dollars on a one-day jazzy pass, pulled it up on our phone, and took a 20-minute trolley ride out to the city park. Oh, 
Ooh, the sun came out and it feels so good because it has been freezing here today. One thing you need to do when you come to New Orleans is get out of the French Quarter. If you have the time, get outside of that neighborhood, get off Bourbon Street, and come out and see some of the beauty of New Orleans, like the New Orleans City Park. They have paddle boats, running paths, a place for your dog to walk. They've got museums, and if you want to kill two birds with one stone, they do have a Café du Monde out here as well. So if you wanted to check off beignets and Café du Monde off your list, but you also wanted to see a little bit more of New Orleans, come out here to the city park, get you those beignets, and soak up some of this beauty. While I'm thinking about it, if you're finding this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button. It really does help out the channel. If you missed my New Orleans food video, I'm gonna link it in the description below because we also tried Cafe Beignet and I wonder if maybe Cafe Beignet's beignets are a little bit better than these. They were just more dense and fluffy. These beignets are delicious too, but I think maybe now that I've had Cafe Beignet, I might like theirs better. Which one do you like better? If you've had both, tell me down in the comments below which beignet is your favorite, Cafe Beignet or Cafe Du Monde? Y'all, this city park is way better than Jeff and I even thought it would be, which kind of sounds silly, it's a city park, but there's so much here to do. There's so much open land to just kind of do your own thing, you know, play soccer or have a picnic. There's a place that we stumbled upon and it's called Storyland. They have a mini roller coaster in here, I see. They have a carousel. I know there's supposed to be a Ferris wheel. So I think when it opens back up, definitely you gotta bring your kids here. Another thing I think you should do when you visit New Orleans is take yourself on a walking tour. Now these tours can be in a group or they can be self-guided. Some are paid tours and some of them are free. I found lots of tours inside the French Quarter, but if you want to adventure outside the French Quarter, I highly recommend checking out either maybe the Garden District or taking some of the cemetery tours. We didn't have time this trip for a guided tour, so I found this company called Atlantis Audio Tours, and they have audio tours that you can listen to on your phone while you give yourself a self-guided tour, and you can really take this tour when it's convenient for your schedule. I'll put a link to Atlantis Audio Tours in the description below. Today, I chose an audio tour for Lafayette Cemetery number one. Now, this cemetery is supposed to be the third oldest in the city of New Orleans, right behind St. Louis number one and St. Louis number two cemeteries. Keep in mind that a lot of the historical cemeteries these days are closed to visitors, unless you're visiting a deceased relative or you're on a guided tour. The audio tour today said that there's over 1,000 plots in this one square block of a cemetery, and it's debated how many bodies are actually here because initially a lot of the burials were put underground and they weren't marked. This next part wasn't necessarily supposed to be part of this video, but we just happened to stumble upon a parade down here on St. Charles Street, and we went to a parade last night and it was fun, but this parade is a block party. Everybody has tents set up. People are doing karaoke. They've clearly been out here all day. Jeff said this is the third parade that has been down the street. So they're already primed and ready to go. Come with us and let's check out this Mardi Gras parade.
Okay, so I know I said that New Orleans is so much more than Bourbon Street, and it is. Hopefully I've showed you that today. But I don't think that it would be fair if I made this video about your first time in New Orleans without showing you Bourbon Street. Now I'm not gonna be able to talk on Bourbon Street because it's so loud, there's so many people and music. So I'm just gonna take you down the street and show you kind of what it looks like. Keep in mind that Bourbon Street is basically bars, booze, boobs, and beads. We are here for the closing weekend of Mardi Gras. Fat Tuesday is on Tuesday and it's Saturday now. So the crowd levels are at a peak. Keep that in mind, but I'm gonna tell you, 365 days a year, Bourbon Street is busy. Now, I'm not gonna show you nudity or anything like that, but if looking at Bourbon Street is just not your thing, I'll put a timestamp right here where you can fast forward to and get past Bourbon Street. Other than that, uh, let's go. <laughs> On Bourbon Street, you're going to see all kinds of characters, people trying to make money any way they can, whether it's letting you take pictures with their reptiles, dancing grannies wanting to dance with you for a tip, kids on the street playing drums. There's also a pretty big police presence on Bourbon Street, despite what you might have heard. And usually police don't get involved unless something really bad's going down, like urinating in the street or getting in a fist fight. Also, be sure to watch where you step because there's a lot of garbage, probably throw up, beer, and yes, maybe even urine when you walk down Bourbon Street. Bourbon Street is also the place for gimmicky drinks. You're going to see everything from a drink in a fishbowl, hand grenades, and yes, I got the big ass beer literally in a cup shaped like a butt. I don't know if you can hear me. Probably our first and only Bourbon Street drink. It's a big ass beer. <laughs> literally, it's an ass. are going to be expensive and they are going to be potent. Know your limit and you're going to need a friend to help pick you up off the sidewalk and get you back down the street. I'm sorry my mics are dead. It's been a long day of filming, but if you happen to visit New Orleans during Mardi Gras, be sure to check out some of their Mardi Gras parades. They're so much fun. They toss a lot of good things. It's probably where I'm gonna leave you on this video. Be sure to like and subscribe, and also check out my other Mardi Gras video that I've got coming out. We're gonna be here for Fat Tuesday this year, and I'm gonna film the whole day. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss when that video comes out. Otherwise, thank you for watching and safe and beautiful travels.